Home stretch, we're almost there. I just need to now rivet the band into place. Um, so let's get to it. I'll be over here. I've got a bird's eye punch, which I'm using for my rivet set to hold these rivets. So I've got little eighth inch uh, rivets with a dome head on them. I've got um, the rivets in. When I had bolted this on, I bolted basically every other just to hold everything in place so then I can put the rivets in. So now what I'm going to do is remove all these um, bolts that were holding it together and then replace it with rivets and then we are gonna be done. Very last step, I want to put a leather strap in here. I don't know that I'm ever actually going to finish the, the bottom portion and make this a wearable pauldron, but I want to leave the option there. So these top two holes, I'm going to fasten into a piece of leather here. Um, so the first thing I have to do is just balance that out and mark my holes. So I have all the center here. Get my scribe off my compass. Mark the leather. And then I need to punch some holes. I'm just going to put a bolt through temporarily to hold the one side in place. So I can rivet the first one. I was using quarter inch long rivets along the band there that was sufficient depth but to get through the leather I need something a little bit longer. Uh, so I got half inch ones here which might be a tad long um, so I'll have to snip those off. Alright so snipped that half inch rivet down maybe about three eighths long and now I'm putting a washer onto the inside there to push against the leather that will hold the pieces together. Now back to my rivet set. And there we have it. So I've got my uh, strap on there now that could be, um, well, maybe there will be a buckle or some sort of attachment depending how it ends up getting attached to something. If I ever actually finish this, it may get into a wearable pauldron. But there we have it. And you can see, do I look like Jamie Lannister? No. Anyway, so I'm pretty happy. Everything worked out. Um, as I said in the last video, I deviated uh, quite a bit on the main, and as I got into the hole deviating from the from the Canon uh, original, um, I decided to carry that through on the rim. I was going to polish it up and try to match um, the original a little bit better, so I actually grind out all the hammer marks. But as I was doing it, I just thought it looked so uh, sensual to have those hammer marks in there, uh, so I decided to leave that. In. I really kind of like the effect, but I uh, deviated from the original. I guess that makes me a medium. And uh, yeah, there it is. So I'm going to talk now a little bit about uh, historical context. I believe that um, the creators of, of this armor for Game of Thrones um, were really inspired by um, parade armor from the 16th century. Um, you see, at the end of the Middle Ages, as Probably mainly because gunpowder was entering into warfare. At the very time that uh, the armor um, was developed to a technical level that it was basically indestructible, um, 
based on the weapons at the time. Gunpowder was emerging on the uh, battlefield and basically nullified the effect of heavy armor. So they had to move away from it. And during that time, um, the armor makers started leaning towards making more stuff for tournaments um, and also parade armor. Which is really, this this kind of funny animal where it was mainly like uh, jewelry, kind of ego stuff for uh, the aristocracy and the royalty and stuff like that. Um, these guys would commission these outlandish suits with very decorated, um, a lot of um, detail and um, just embellishment. And one of the guys, uh, one of the armorers of this era was Filippo Negro. Filippo Negro, you got Italian, you know? And uh, he made probably the most outrageous sort of uh, armor, what he did, a really huge inspiration for me, and did a lot of stuff with faces and, and what we call grotesques, which are um, you know, kind of like demonic you know, or uh, gargoyle type faces and things like that. We, that really dominated a lot of his work, but he had very intricate sculpture covering most of the armor. Um, and I believe that this line had already um, was based on one of his suits, and I was looking for a reference on it, and I could only get really rainy pictures of it, um, and I think it wasn't actually a line head, but some sort of blue but in any event, that's what I think Game of Thrones was going for, it's based on that type of armor, which was not a practical armor, it was something that was more of a showpiece, I think of it like wearable jewelry that these guys were just showing off with. Um, but it's, it's really cool stuff, and it was the fantasy armor of actual history, and uh, it's something that has really inspired me, and I really like doing that sort of thing. So I'm quite pleased with the effect here. Well, that about does it. We have finished the pauldron. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. I think this was really a very cool project. I'd love to do the entire suit, but extrapolating the numbers, it would take literally months um, the amount of detail to, to do something like that onto the rest of that suit is just astronomical, but I uh, wish I had the free time to be able to devote to, to that, or a customer that would, would actually be willing to pay for it. So anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you enjoyed this, to give it a thumbs up, uh, leave your comments below, please subscribe to our channel, we're making more videos like this, we're bringing our production values up. So until next time, see ya!